Hello people, in this video let us look at bacterial corneal ulcer. In the exam they can also say it is bacterial keratitis because this keratitis can lead to ulcer. Okay, so all the problems in the cornea because of bacteria. So if you look at this, this is um, the cornea, right? Where is the cornea? This is the cornea, right? The cornea um, is getting invaded or attacked by bacteria, right? It's getting attacked by bacteria and causing inflammation of the cornea. The cornea is actually protected by tear film. That is the only protection. Otherwise, uh, what protection does it have? Tell it is almost, uh, it's the anterior most. So, it is very prone to this uh, bacterial attack. Especially if people are uh, not maintaining hygiene, if their body has some other conditions, right? So, all this can lead to, it can lead to, Keratitis and keratitis will lead to ulcer. Okay. So, what is keratitis? It is inflammation of the cornea. This can be ulcerative or non-ulcerative. Usually, it is bacterial corneal ulcer, um, bacterial keratitis or will be uh, ulcerative. So, it will become bacterial corneal ulcer. What is ulcer, guys? Ulcer is discontinuation in the normal epithelial surface and there can be underlying necrosis. Pathologically, what will you see? Microscopically, you will see edema, cellular infiltration. Which are the organisms, uh, bacteria? Uh, it can be streptococcus, staphylococcus, all these bacteria can attack. In fact, if uh, the epithelium is totally intact also, there are some organisms which are so virulent that they can invade an intact epithelium. Completely healthy epithelium, um, they can at uh, attack and... Why is it zooming? It can attack an intact epithelium. Which are those organisms? Those organisms are Neisseria meningitidis, Neisseria gonorrhoeae, and Corvini bacterium diphtheria. Okay, so those are the three organisms that can invade intact epithelium. Other than this, a lot of bacteria are there: Haemophilus, Moraxella, so many bacteria are there. Okay. So, let us look at the stages of uh, bacterial uh, keratitis. In initially, there is uh, infiltration, progressive infiltration. What will you see in il infiltration? So, there will be uh, neutrophils coming here, lymphocytes, right? Then, uh, necrosis. Basically, there is damage to the corneal epithelium. Do you know the layers of the cornea? So, here you have the corneal epithelium. Right, where is the corneal epithelium? The outermost you have corneal epithelium, then here you have endothelium, and the middle you have stroma. So the epithelium, what is happening to the epithelium? Abrasion, epithelial drying, necrosis, desquamation, epithelial damage, right? All that is happening. Then comes ulceration. So what happens? Keratitis will have it can lead to ulceration, especially if it is bacterial, isn't it? So in active ulceration, what will happen? There is epithelium will get sloughed off. So that is when it becomes a ulcer, right? That is when it is called as an ulcer. So the epithelium is getting sloughed off. So a discontinuity in the epithelium with underlying necrosis will be ulcer, right? So there is active ulceration. Here what will happen? The Bowman's membrane, the stroma, all of them can get involved. So, you know where the Bowman's membrane is? Just behind the epithelium, you have the Bowman's membrane. It is actually the basement membrane for the epithelium, they say. Okay, so what and all are we getting involved here? Epithelium, Bowman's membrane, even the stroma can get involved. In this stage, you can see hyperemia, that is more blood, right? Network of vessels, this Decimetocel formation will be there. What is this decimetocel? Do you know what Desmet's membrane is? So here, endothelium is there, right? Before that, you have Desmet's membrane. Okay, and uh, that is getting involved, right? Till there, it is getting involved, maybe. So they are saying it is a decimetocel. Here, you can see it is just just a very thin line is there here, right? This is a decimetocel. This is an active ulceration. Further, what happens if this person coughs or sneezes, there can be a perforation. What happens if there's a perforation? All the aqueous humor will come out, right? There will be a perforation and all the aqueous humor can leak out and the iris can come from, the lens can come from. So, all that can happen in this decil metocel formation, okay? And that can go on to become adherent leukoma. 
then you have a state of regression right if it doesn't go uh, all there then regression what happens basically that's a good thing right uh, our defense mechanisms our antibody production all that is going to help in regression so there will there can be a line of demarcation between the antigens and the antibodies now what is the cicatrization cicatrization means um, healing right basically there is healing now in healing there can be scar the scar can be nebula macula leukoma so many words are there here okay what else in cicatrization the epithelium will uh, you know there is epithelialization so epithelium is healing so if just the epithelium is involved okay fine it will heal and all that but little, let's say little bowman's membrane or little superficial stroma everything is involved some scarring can remain and those scars are like nebula macula leukoma look at this one the corneal opacity same thing you will learn there also nebular macular leukomatous leukoma simplex adherent leukoma where the iris is adherent to the cornea facet keratectasia anterior staphyloma so this word also they are telling you right anterior staphyloma look at this perforated corneal ulcer with prolapse of iris so there's a perforation they are saying here look at this bacterial corneal ulcer oval ulcer ring shaped ulcer so these people will have pain okay because it's cornea right cornea pain foreign body sensation you should write more okay and uh, vision is affected photophobia redness of eye watering of eye all these you should not forget remember cornea right so vision pain photophobia all these are important see this is bacterial right so it is possible that you will see a hypopion what is hypopion see this is pio is actually pus so here you can see some white okay that is uh, actually leukocytes in um, anterior chamber so where is anterior chamber here just behind the cornea here you will have a uh, all the white blood cells accumulating so that will be a hypopion in this case the hypopion in uh, bacterial keratitis the hypopion which is formed will be sterile sterile means there will be no bacteria in it okay so let us say this is the hypopion here right there that will be what sterile why is it sterile because the bacteria cannot penetrate the desmids membrane okay so hypopion if it is uh, bacterial it will be sterile but if it is fungal there can be fungal hyphae because fungus can penetrate so uh, this is hypopion so as such when you uh, see signs what will you see you can see hypopion that actually moves it moves we've already seen all this in the hypopion lecture look at this um, the hypopion so when the patient tilts their head for some time and sits the hypopion has moved this is bacterial right in bacterial keratitis you can see this so this is sterile that is no bacteria and it moves so what will you see here in the signs in this patient when you examination you can see swelling of eyelids blepharospasm conjunctiva is also having chemosed okay chemosis hyperemia ciliary congestion corneal ulcer you can see floor of ulcer you will see necrotic material so here they are saying right oval ulcer yellowish white area of ulcer may be oval margins will be swollen margins of the ulcer will be swollen or overhanging floor of the ulcer is covered by necrotic material stromal edema is present surrounding the ulcer area see if it is uh, staphylococcus streptococcus usually you can remember whitish yellow etc if it's pseudomonas you remember green okay and the pseudomonas one right they are saying that it will have hypopion and it can perforate very quickly so you can just remember pseudomonas green hypopion perforates very quickly this uh, then they are saying e coli proteus klebsiella which are enterobacteriaceae they will have shallow ulcer okay with grayish white pleomorphic suppuration and diffuse stromal opalescence and the endotoxins produced by gram negative bacteria they will produce this ring shaped corneal infiltrate so this one is um, e coli proteus or klebsiella isn't it ring shaped then they are saying the iris may be muddy is this this is looking muddy to you iris may be muddy 
and uh, the pupil may be small because of iritis and intraocular pressure may be raised inflammatory glaucoma okay uh, you can think of uh, something like this isn't it the anterior chamber is full of these uh, cells so what will happen so the intraocular pressure can be more inflammatory glaucoma so iris can become muddy the pupil can become small because of the iritis intraocular pressure may be high so what will happen if you leave it as it is uh, iridocyclitis secondary glaucoma decimetocele we already told you these words right that can lead to perforation of corneal ulcer corneal scarring all this can happen now how will you manage a case of corneal ulcer you should basically rule out um, lacrimal sac what is it infection okay anyways you will do all clinical examination and all that that you know right staining of ulcer they are talking about staining of ulcer they are talking about then laboratory investigations let us look at lab investigation that comes under management only isn't it okay let's put here lab investigations here what will you do normal um, hemoglobin total leukocyte count differential leukocyte count esr blood sugar why are they writing all this complete examination they are doing microbiological investigations to check which organism right microbiological investigations okay then that and all you can write for fungal koh wet mount then gram stain for bacteria then culture on blood agar for aerobic organisms for fungus sda agar so much they're writing here that you already know in microbiology now let's go to treatment as it's caused by bacteria you will give antibiotic right so specifically they are talking about cefazolin 5% Tobramycin, one point three percent. Fluoroquinolones, gatifloxacin, ciprofloxacin. No, all these same things. Okay, cefazolin, five percent. So you can just remember, cefazolin, five percent. Tobramycin. fluoroquinolones like ciprofloxacin ofloxacin gatifloxacin they are talking about vancomycin also okay so they are talking about topical antibiotics right topical antibiotics then they will talk about systemic antibiotics obviously they are usually not required they are saying but if you want what will you give cephalosporin aminoglycoside oral ciprofloxacin systemic antibiotics also you can give okay now coming to non specific treatment guys non specific treatment what and all you will give um cycloplegics like atropine homatropine basically to control the spasm and the pain if it is required only pain reduction right if they have pain yes pain is more it is something that is involving cornea then this is also in uh, increasing the blood supply right so it will improve healing and uh, what else so you can give atropine home atropine etc then you can give um, uh, paracetamol ibuprofen right all these are systemic analgesics and anti inflammatory drugs then you can give vitamin a b c all these to help healing general measures what will you do addition hot fomentation dark goggles rest diet okay fresh air in terms term, in for bacterial they are telling this right why will you give uh, dark goggles photophobia right that's all in this video guys on bacterial keratitis leading to bacterial corneal ulcer bye bye